So the goal, it is just my opinion and it's just my belief. The goal I believe would be to be able to explain the outcome, to explain why it categorized or made some decision, a deep learning neural network made some decision, right? And that is reasonable to expect. And in order to do that, it has to understand the context in which the system is operating. Suppose I were to make an English statement today, right? Um, it is almost impossible for any AI algorithm today to tell me if I made a serious statement or my statement was sarcastic, right? It is almost impossible. Again, if I were to post a violent video involving me, it is very challenging to decide if I'm really committing some violence or is this a movie trailer, some violent movie in which I'm an actor, correct? So these are the kind of problems the social media companies like Twitter and Facebook are dealing with today. It's a really challenging problem. It's very difficult to automate. You need to know the context, correct? You need to know whether the video is of a movie trailer or some homemade movie or it's some really violent thing happening, right? Before you decide to pull it down. So understanding the context, it's very difficult. Today's deep learning systems do not have a way to encode the context to inform the system that, oh, this is the context. There is some limited success, like you would have seen, um, you take all the tweets and identify whether it's a good tweet or what is the mood and so on, but they are only very limited. You cannot go beyond that as of today, correct? And the other one is you want to be able to reason about the decisions. For example, if you have a, a cancer diagnostic deep learning algorithm, right? If it is going to categorize something, some tissue as a cancerous tissue, you better know, it better explain you why it made that choice. Because these decisions, if, it, if they go wrong, can have profound implications, correct? So the way they handle it today is by having a human counterpart and trying to aid the human counterpart with this deep learning algorithm so that if this algorithm happens to make a mistake, he can correct it and so on. But in future, it may not be the case, at least from what we are made to believe, right? So before we end up in a day where the deep learning algorithms are going to make the choice, we may want to have this deep learning system also know how to tell us what led the algorithm to make the choice that it made gave me a set of sequences, right? Set of steps. Oh, I made this, 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 this is what made me make this choice, right? Rather than just numbers like, oh, I'm 95% accurate, but you can be 5% wrong, right? And those implications are going to be very serious. And you should be able to make high stake decisions by high stake. You can think of uh, autonomous car merging onto a highway or a surgical robot, or again, the example we saw, medical diagnostics, right? But those are really high stake decisions because the implications are very serious and they should be able to do it in a secure environment, right? Because you don't want a hacker to hack into the system and then modify the decisions, correct? You don't want any intruder to influence the decisions of the algorithm. First of all, the algorithm has to be correct. It should be able to explain itself. And number two, it should not be possible for an intruder to modify a correct algorithm and influence it, correct? And these all encapsulate what I meant by explainable layer, okay? So what about this general artificial intelligence that we saw, the symbolic AI? More than 20 years ago, there was a lot of effort, right? But it kind of fizzled out and then we ended up in this deep learning, which is working really well. But again, it's not able to explain and we are kind of stuck. Oh, we are using deep learning. It explains we have 95% accuracy, but we are not able to make the kind of explanations that the general AI, which didn't scale that well, but at least was able to give some logical reasoning. What do we do? So I do not know how many of you have read this book called Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. It's a wonderful book. So this is basically about behavioral psychology. So Daniel Kahneman says that our brain or our behavior has system one and system two modes, right? So we invoke system one for our routine activities like the ones we are accustomed to. 
uh, like driving in a busy highway. We don't really think too hard, right? We are just automated. We just drive, we just navigate the road or switching between different languages while speaking. Um, like when I switch between English and some Indian language, English sentence structures are like subject, verb, and object. And most of the Indian languages that I know, the sentence structure is subject, object, and verb. And my brain, without putting any effort, it is able to switch between these structures, which is phenomenal, actually, when you think about it. Not many computer algorithms can do that. So these are all system one, because uh, I have seen these sentence patterns, right? When I was growing up and I have learned through pattern matching, correct? So the system one has over the years learned from patterns and it is really fast and it is really habitual. You need not think deep in order to do it. But when you are asked to solve a math problem, right? Some differentiation or something, unless you are a math genius, you will have to sit down and think right? You have to retrieve some deep knowledge from your memory and some logical reasoning, and you have to solve that problem. So you cannot do it as uh, in an automated fashion as you drive in a busy highway, correct? You need to put some effort. That is pretty slow, but it involves more thinking and it involves more logical reasoning. Whereas when driving in a highway, you will just cut across someone else. And if they ask you, oh, why did you do that? You would say, oh, I was frustrated. I just felt like doing it. You don't have any logical reason, right? Whereas if you have to solve a math problem, you will have that logical reason because that is called system two, right? And if any of you have watched Joshua Benjo's Europe's talk last year, he made a very beautiful analogy between system one and system two deep learning systems, right? With respect to AI, he calls the present day AI system system one because it has learned using pattern matching. It is really fast. It may not do logical reasoning, but it is really fast because we give lots of data and it's kind of a very habitual system. And he says that we have to move towards system two AI, which will be able to give explanations, which may be slow, but that's all right. Let it be slow, but it will be able to explain the decisions that it made. It will be able to understand the context. It will be able to do logical decision making. Right, it's a, it's a very brilliant talk, and I highly recommend this talk. It is there on YouTube, you can just go and watch it. But there is some effort merging symbolic AI and this, the present day deep learning systems, but they are more academic as of now. We don't see it in really large scale systems, but the hope is that it's going to it's going to be the future, at least it has to be if we have to adopt these deep learning systems and very critical softwares like self-driving cars or medical diagnostics and so on, right? So this is my speculation and my hope for the future of AI.